order, please. Um, can I have a roll call? Maggie Larson. Here. Todd Marsh. Here. Carrie Clark. Here. Paul Hackworth. Here. Tom McCallion. Here. Marsha Brown. Here. Barbara Wentworth. Here. Susan Tierney. Here. Mandy Demers. Here. Great. Please join me in the pledge. Comments by visitors this evening. <laughs> Please approach the podium. State your name and address. We'd be happy to hear you. Seeing none, uh, moving to the consent calendar, I would like to add under uh, 2.6 the policy notes that we've all received, just adding it into the um, consent calendar for the policy notes from uh, 10 23 23. Is there any objection to that? That's all right, all right. So as with that addition, what's the wish of the board um, to adopt the consent calendar as presented? I move to adopt the consent calendar as presented. I second that. Okay, any discussion about any of the items um, in the consent calendar? All right, seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, all right, the consent calendar is adopted. Moving to reports, uh, 3.1, there's no student representative report. There hopefully will be at our next meeting um, this month. Um, agenda item 3.2, our superintendent's report. Thank you, Madam Chairperson. Um, I have a couple of things to talk about tonight. First, in your packet, I uh, provided you. Thank you, Madam Chairperson. Uh, in your packet, um, I provided you with a a copy of the um, school resource officer mem memorandum of understanding that I signed along with the police chief uh, that hadn't been updated for many, many years. So um, part of uh, our work is to kind of bring those documents up, up to date. Uh, he looked at it, I looked at it, we had a good conversation about it and signed off on it. So I just wanna let you know that's in existence, it's been updated. Um, I have a brief building and grounds update for you. Uh, a couple of things, um, a quick update on the track and field project that we've talked about at the last um, uh, committee meeting. Uh, the existing drain survey uh, happened today and um, according to Jay, things are progressing with that particular project. We had met, I think, about almost a month ago now. It's been a while, right? Uh, so that's happening. Um, the school-based health clinic, which I, I believe the um, one of your subcommittees met today and talked about a brochure um, that the clinic is moving along nicely. Walls are up, uh, mudding and paint will happen uh, next week. Plumbing is nearly done, uh, aside from the fixture installation. Um, flooring still needs to be completed and uh, we will be able to turn the space over to Goodwin the last week of November. So that's happening, uh, barring any unforeseen um, issues. So. Uh, that's progressing nicely, and uh, I'm sure we'll have a, a, a grand opening for that and invite folks over, and so that's moving right along. And then the roof, uh, uh, we did a walkthrough, uh, Jay did a walkthrough with, with the Fire and Building Code Enforcement um, officials last week about some of the roof uh, issues that were brought up uh, at the City Council meeting. And uh, they, the, the folks that came in, the building code enforcement and fire folks, uh, seem happy with the state of the roof and the ceilings. Um, everything uh, went well in terms of the walkthrough at both the middle school and the high school, and the remaining roofs will be replaced next summer. I do want to note that um, there was a check on the fire alarm, and that's operating appropriately. So just a brief update for you on that. I know, uh, I think, um, Paul's going to want to bring up something a little bit later as part of a committee report, I think, uh, and I'll, I'll save that for you. Um, and then the other item that I have for you is, um, Steve, can you stand, come up to the podium? Thank you very much. So I am pleased to announce to you that um, Steve Hod Hodston was, did I pronounce that right? Hodston. <laughs> I'll be all right. Um, he was uh, recently uh, recognized as the 2003, 2023 Division Three Volleyball Coach of the Year. Congratulations! So, um, Thank you so much. You, you had you had a fantastic season. I got to go to a number of games. The girls did a phenomenal job this year, and they came one game short. 
Uh, and I just wanted to give a shout out to your team and to you. You have an amazing group of young women, and I know they'll be back next year, even though you're going to go up a division. You're going to go from uh, Division Three to Division Two. But we're so proud of them and you, and congratulations. Thank so. you very much. And like I, every, when people bring this up to me in the last couple of weeks, what I tell them is this is 100% a player's award. Um, you know, I have, like you just said, I have a tremendous team. They make it fun every day. They work hard. And this is from varsity, varsity all the way down through, the, through our reserve program. Uh, we had 44 girls try out this year. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm very privileged to be part of that organization. And, you know, some of our board members' kids are on this program. And uh, they, they make it fun every day. And, and I received this because of them. So uh, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. And it's nice to see you recognize for your hard work. So well, thank, thank you, you so much. much for what you do. And tell the girls they're wonderful. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then I just want to put a plug in. Uh, we came out with the first edition of the Super News, which um, is design, designed to share good news uh, about the school uh, uh, district. And I know one of your goals is communication, so I thought it would be prudent to create um, a newsletter. And what's interesting, uh, I just want to draw your attention, there was an article done on uh, Eric Mumson. And uh, he's the gentleman behind the artwork with all the cats that you see throughout uh, the school district. Um, so that was nice to showcase him. And he's a wonderful man and really knowledgeable about Summersworth and um, just can't say enough nice things about him. And then we did a story on title funds at Summersworth School and parent involvement and then Lights On for Learning. That was showcased in this. So I'm hoping if anyone's watching this, if they can look for the super news it's located um, there are links um, to the the newsletter on the SEU website and school websites as well as our Facebook page which we now have close to 90 followers which is good it's going to continue to grow over time so uh, and that's linked there so I just wanted to put a plug in for this and trying to share the good news about um, our school district and then uh, I wanted to just give you an update um, I've, I've hired a, a, a company called New View to come in and do um, uh, their tech technology advisors. Um, they, they've come in and started the beginning the work um, on um, doing a technology plan for us. The last technology plan you had um, expired in 2018, and you know it's moving forward with the budget. And as we move forward to the future, I think it's important to update that and get you new information. Um, we've, I met last week with uh, the owner of Back Bay and um, Tim Martin, who is the uh, primary, he's the principal for New View, and we had a great meeting. Um, uh, everyone seems to be on the same page, and uh, it, was, it, it was good. We're moving forward and, and collecting that data. That plan should be done within 60 to 90 days, and I'll be more than happy to share with you that with you when it gets completed. So uh, we're moving forward on that front. So I just want to let you know that as well. And uh, I don't know if you have any questions for me, but that's it for my report. Okay. Yes. Yeah, board Member Tierney. Yes, I do. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> I had a couple questions about the MOU. Um, remind me, was there something, um, was any of this tied in with the appropriation that we just got approval for, or was that already part of our budget? I'm sort of looking at both of you here. Like, was that? So this was an for overdue, um, you know, uh, contract or you mm -hmm. know understand like the the official between us and the police department right it's yeah. not a new yeah. it's, it's nothing not new the um addition of an S sro is that where you're right talking? yeah that's kind of where i'm going no, so it's not no it's it's okay. for the existing sro that's for the existing sro okay yeah. and but now correct me if i'm wrong did we not add another position because of the appropriation or no we did okay so we just have the one correct okay so um, how, uh, at one point, so last year, as of last year, we had a truancy officer and an SRO, right? Right. right. Okay. So right now we do not have a truancy officer. Right. We had a truancy officer that resigned and, and yes. took a job elsewhere. And uh, given the financial situation, I chose not to fill that position at this particular point, giving some of the overages with, with special ed. And we're continuing to see more of that coming in. There is a possibility, and I need to get a sense of wh wh where this uh, board is, uh, perhaps using that money for, um, you know, maybe a part-time um, SRO for elementary school levels. 
Okay. So the reason I'm just asking is because I actually had an opportunity to meet our SRO um, on election day and just chat with him and um, very, very nice guy. It was, it was great to meet him. Um, but he indicated that he's actually handling a lot of the truancy cases and that um and so i wasn't clear if is that part of his role like is that actually part of the the role of the sro to so handle it wasn't that? in the past but okay. given the situation we're in um okay i i put that on hold for a while just to see okay know, things were gonna land okay um, all right so. i just i i think it it might be worth um I, I guess i would advocate for us just making sure that he's still able to do the the assigned sro duties you know that the truancy isn't taking up too much of his time. I don't know how much time it is taking up, but I just would advocate that we figure that out and make sure everybody, you know, gets what they need. Right, and I've had discussions with the principals about the possibility of um, having some of the interventionists, if they continue to be funded, to help work on that as a school, homeschool liaison piece. Uh, mm -hmm. So there's some things in the work mm -hmm. we're, we're kind of thinking that on through. To I mean, be I honest, think with we're you. still exploring the addition of a additional SRO, mm -hmm. but not at this very moment, is that correct? Yeah. 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 yeah, I think we have to explore it because it could be a part time, you know, it's, a, it's working since now that we're having the MOUs in place mm -hmm. um, with the police department that we're overdue, now we can work forward and more of that. Yeah. yeah. Some of the things I'm putting in place, just so we have it on record, it helps with grants, um, is there's another agreement that we just signed today um, it's called the Sa Safe Schools Act, and it's a Safe Schools MOU, and that's required by law, and that, that hadn't been updated for a number of years. So mm -hmm. we, we finalized that today. So you have the SRO MOU, the Safe Schools MOU, and, um, and I'll, I wanted to get those things in place before I met with the safety committee, and I'm going to be scheduling a safety committee meeting with um, a number of folks, fire, fire chief, who's also the emergency management director, police chief, mm -hmm. and others. Um, we're also working on, right now, reunification plans uh, in, in, in moments of crisis. And those are, that's, that's something that needs to be done and we're moving forward with that. So I anticipate having a meeting in a few weeks with, with the large safety group. Okay, so it sounds like you're kind of working on a, an overall plan for just how safety and yeah. all, all the, right. support, you know, that's, okay. That's, that's good, thank you. Anything else, any other questions? Okay, That's thank it. you. Thank, thank you, you Madam so Chair. Yep. All right, moving to agenda item 3.3, .3, our business administrator's report. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Um, so I've updated our current budget with the Department of Revenue for the changes made with the supplemental appropriation. It's been approved, so I'm updating it in our system, and I'll give you a full budget update at your next meeting, as I typically do at the second meeting of the month. Um, we have had continued rising costs for special ed. Um, students moving into the district with significant needs, um, also students being placed out of district. So even in even receiving the supplemental appropriation, those costs continue to rise every day. Um, we're in the process of identifying the costs associated with these students, and um, once we determine the cost, we'll bring back a recommendation to the board, because I am concerned with the overall health of the budget at this point, because of the rising costs in special ed, it, it is causing significant increases. So just wanted to put that out there. Um, at also at the November 6th Budget and Revenue Committee meeting, um, I brought forward a request to the committee to utilize some of the supplemental appropriation adequacy funds to replace the furnace, one of the furnaces at the SAU office. So we've had three separate incidents um, at the office with either carbon monoxide leaks or propane leaks, um, which we've had to evacuate the office. Staff has had to get checked out by EMTs three times. Um, and so we're recommending that we replace one of the units. So there's two units that service the office, one down in the special ed wing, one down in the business office. Um, unit two, which services um, the business wing, is the one that needs to be replaced um, uh, immediately due to the safety concerns for our staff and the heating issues that we've been having. Unit one is the special ed wing. That one is functioning but does need to be replaced. So the committee discussed um, replacing unit two immediately with um, those funds and then budgeting for the second unit in our FY25 budget, which you're going to see um, later on. So the cost to replace that unit is uh, $22,326. Later on on your agenda is an action item to approve uh, using the funds to replace that unit. 
Um, as far as the FY24-25 budget prep goes, we are in the preliminary stages. Um, the superintendent and I met with all building admin, um, had a preliminary discussions on staffing needs and budget requests. Um, the Budget and Revenue Committee met and finalized the SAU budget um, that you're going to see tonight. Um, and then the full board will vote on that in December. Um, we received our health insurance rates for the upcoming year. Um, so they've come in at 4.9% for custodians and 4.1% for all other employees. The reason there's two separate rates is the custodians moved to school care originally before everybody else. We used to have health trust, and then so they moved on their own, and then everybody else moved to school care, so they're rated differently, so that's why there's a difference there. And then our dental insurance came in at 4.7. So um, it's actually great news because our health last year came in at 8.1% increase. So I was very happy with the 4.1 and 4.9. I was estimating about a 10% increase, so I was happy with that. I am still waiting on the estimate for our adequacy revenue for next year. It's due by tomorrow, so I'm expecting that to come in. Um, at the next Budget Revenue Committee meeting on December 5th, um, we'll, I'll be going over the, the health rates and uh, the revenue projections for next year. Um, also, we received, um, uh, we were contacted by James Bennett from National Gypsum, which is a company out of Portsmouth. Um, later on in your agenda, there's an action item to approve this. He reached out to us as part of their Giving Tuesday um, that they would like to gift $30,000 to the Career and Tech Center to be used for STEM programs. Um, so I spoke with Caitlin, and her intent for the funds is to use the money to expand student access to STEAM and CTE programming through classroom activities, access to equipment, and enrichment options with the goal of impacting students across the entire district. Um, so per your policy, DJH, all donations in excess of $10,000 need to be approved by the full board. So we're bringing this to you tonight to accept these funds so that we can move forward with accepting the donation from them. So we are very excited. Uh, we can do a lot of great things with 30000 and we thank them for their generosity in reaching out to us. And then the last piece, um, our Joint Loss Management co Committee is up and running. We've had our, um, two meetings um, this year so far. We're working on revising our safety plan. We, we met on the 9th, and um, we have our nice draft going. And so once that's completed, we'll be bringing that back to the board as well. It's a requirement for the Department of Labor. So that's all I have. Anyone add? I'll go, um, yeah. I'll go before I just wanted to add to piggy on, piggyback on what um, Katie said. Um, we're looking at the possibility of having um, uh, kind of a um, uh, award of the grant on the 28th, your next school uh, board meeting. So we're working on having an official presentation. I think uh, we'll, we'll see how that works out. But I'll let you know ahead of time if that's going to materialize uh, in your board pack up, back up uh, for next meeting. Okay. Oh, for the, for the STEM? For the yes, for the $30,000 oh, oh, okay. donation. Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful. All right, Board okay. Member Tierney. Yes, uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Katie, <clears throat> when you talk about the um, the rising special ed costs, especially from kids coming out of you know for, into the district, um, can you just what what kinds of things account for that? like those rising costs like what so a lot of times if students move into the district sometimes they already require a one-on-one -on -one paraprofessional so it would okay. be an added staff mm -hmm. or sometimes they come in with medical issues that maybe need an LNA or um, they need speech services OT PT things like that okay so they come in already with those existing um, yep. services okay thank you mm -hmm. anyone else any other questions I think uh, the only um, request is that when the adequ adequacy does come in, can you inform um, uh, budget chair Marsh or something to just let us know what that is, or um, not the full board, but then we can get the information out just so we kind of have an understanding going forward, you know, because it's before our next board meeting. Yep. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah, go ahead. So, sorry, can I just have another follow up? Um, so the students who are coming in from out of district. Um, are I mean are they coming from like where are where are these students coming from? They're moving in from other like they're moving to Summersworth. They're moving to Summersworth from okay, but they're th but they're coming in with already these these needs like they already have an IE IEPs and in yes, place. Yes, or and they everything. like I said I don't want without I you know they yeah, have yeah. medical issues. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. They're, um, like I said, I don't want to really. No, no, no. I know you. Can, I know you have to be general. With, yeah, with, with significant needs that need to. to yeah, and I'm not even. I wouldn't know anything about that. I'm just curious about, um, like, are, are do you, do you feel like is there the sense that students are coming to this district because we can offer 
certain services? I have heard that, yes, that people oh. do come because we do provide uh, wonderful special ed services. I have that. I've heard that. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'm just sort of curious what the... Yeah. Yeah, board member Tierney and others, I think that like once once we kind of get an understanding of that, we may have a, a maybe a special meeting or a budget meeting or something that would make sense to so the board can understand financially, really, because we're not involved in special in, in special ed, but to have it be confidential and just look at what else we can have um, di give direction on for other ways to tackle this, you know, to, to be able to, you know, maybe look at, innovate, li listen to the special ed professionals because it may become such an issue that is going to impact budget and impact our well, decisions. We may need more information, the information that they're able to give us to go forward but yeah. in the future I think we'll be able to do that and have a meeting just for that. Okay yeah I mean that's exactly where I was going I just I mean I think it's wonderful if people if families feel like we can provide services for them I, that's excellent but we do need to be make sure that we are able to <laughs> you know make sure we can still support all of our students right so I just want to make sure we're being you know I, and I know we are I'm just and I'm not sure I'm sure that's not all of it I'm sure yeah. they don't just move here for that right but right, right right well th this is what I'm saying like yeah. I just it just the question came into my mind oh wow this is an interesting mm -hmm. phenomenon right oh. like what what is causing these families to make these decisions yes uh, you know. and some of them are our kids having to be placed out of district as well because we can't provide what they need yeah, this, yeah, good discussion for later. Thank you, Katie, for the update. All right, moving to agenda item 3.4, our city council update. Councilor Austin. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, first of all, congratulations to all those who were elected and re-elected on November 7th. Um, voters have spoken, so uh, congratulations to all of you. I um, want to remind people about the upcoming Christmas parade. I can't believe we're talking about Christmas already. <laughs> Uh, on December 2nd starts at 1 30 and of course you're all invited uh, the uh, council wanted me to make sure we recognize the uh, football teams and the volleyball teams uh, for their su su success uh, this fall um, we've had some outstanding uh, sports events recently and they and uh, we want to make sure to congratulate them um, and that's all I have this evening, except for, as you know, we have, uh, we're starting to talk about bids for road work and things like that for next year. Uh, one of the things we know for sure that we, well, that we put out a bid on, or we'll be putting out a bid on, is the other side of High Street uh, from where we did last year from uh, the intersection down to uh, Memorial Drive. Uh, you know, we did the uh, outgoing side of that street. Uh, with, a, with a grant that we actually received. This year we want to look at doing the other side of the street that we didn't do last year, um, but this one the city will pay for because we can't get a grant for that. Uh, but it, it makes a lot of sense to do both sides of that and then do the road work and be done with it. So that's one thing we'll be looking at. From Memorial to West High, I presume? Yeah, West High down to probably, yeah, down to just about Memorial. Okay, Drive. great. Yeah. All right, thank you. All right, moving on to our committee reports, our standing committees. Uh, we'll start with budget and revenue. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, the uh, Summersworth Budget and Revenue Committee met on November 6th, and uh, really what the business administrator said, <laughs> I could stop there. <laughs> However, I won't. <laughs> um, the, um, so the committee is recommending, as was indicated, to the full board that we replace the heating, heating system unit two with an 80% efficiency at a cost of $22,326. There was some discussion regarding another option with more of a higher efficiency furnace. Um, and I, I sense that, you know, we th th there were part of us that would really would have liked to have done that. However, I think we also discussed with money being tight in priorities and, and uh, it was indicated to us that, that the parts for the higher efficiency unit would be more expensive. Um, it really swayed our decision to um, accept the, the recommendation of the 80% efficiency furnace. Um, but most importantly, we want, after hearing the concerns and, and some of the failures of the current furnace, we really needed to move forward with this um, for the sake of our um, employees. Um, the committee is recommending to the full board um, 
to accept the FY25 SAU56 budget as proposed. That will be discussed later this evening. The committee is recommending to the full board that we accept the intended support in, uh, in donation of the $30,000 from Gypsum, excuse me, National Gypsum to be used by the CTC. Our next meeting is scheduled for December 5th. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, all right, moving to building grounds and transportation, board member Hackworth. Oh, full board. Thank you. Invite to it, and obviously we'll have to post it, and the public is welcome. I guess. Yeah. So by the end of the by the end of this year. All right. Well, yeah. I don't believe we have a non-public, so if we can schedule that with afterwards, good. All right. Educational programs and community outreach. Board member Wentworth. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, we met right before this meeting, um, and it was a lovely meeting. Um, we had uh, mainly we discussed the whole time the school-based health clinic um, this form which is an enrollment and consent form um, it's also the a way to communicate to the public about what we're they're offering um, and just really reviewing reviewing it more questions um, we tried to think of every opportunity um, that might come across um, anyone's desk and figure out how to how to kind of review and explain all of the different um, medical and behavioral services that are going to be offered by this uh, school-based health clinic. Um, a soft opening of December for some targeted students and then a grand opening for January for all of the high school um, students and so we're pretty excited about that. It's a pretty exciting thing. Um, and then our next uh, meeting is December 12th at 5.45. Thanks. Yeah, I would just add that I, in, in down uh, on the first floor in City Hall, there's uh, flyers up that say, you know, coming to Summersworth High School in uh, late 2023, primary care, therapeutic services provided on site three days a week by Goodwin Community Health. And they're asking to help us uh, find a school-based behavioral health specialist. So there's the plug for that. All right. Moving, all right, last but not least, policy, board member Tierney. All right, thank you. Uh, policy committee met yesterday, November 13th. Um, we uh, finished up a discussion on IJOA, which is field trips and excursions, and um, like I brought to the board uh, last meeting the idea is that um, the there is a common form that's basically been in use by the administration when they're requesting field trips um, but then there were multiple versions of permission slips basically and so the admins are going to come together with the superintendent to um, basically agree on more more or less a standard um, permission form permission slip um, we also decided to just kind of clean things up and so basically at this point when you looked at uh, on our policy um, there were form there was a form one and form two and just sort of these other you know these forms sort of attached to the policy that we we we've decided to remove those from from that form so the policy is just going to stand as a policy mm -hmm. and then the for the forms will be forms <laughs> I mean they'll just be you know forms that the that the schools will hold on to um, let's see so the um, yeah so the build like I said the building admins will will work on that form that's not something that the board is really going to weigh in on at that point um, we also uh, started discussion about uh, for policy EBCC which is alarms bomb action uh, active shooter and other such threats um, we basically there just decided to use the updated um, NHSBA policy, um, just uh, rev editing is necessary to use our language, so um, emergency operations plan um, was, was, some, was a plate, we, we added that where needed. Um, 
let's see. We just talked about how, so there is this district crisis prevention and response plan, so that's overall for the district, and then each at each building level there's an emergency operations plan. Um, and then we just barely got into, but we're going to spend the next, the bulk of next policy meeting talking about EHAB, which is the data governance and security policy. Um, so the admins are actually going to get together in the meantime in the next two weeks and um, figure out where that policy, again, the NHSBA sample policy, where it needs to be tweaked to match the, dis you know, the SAU, um, the needs of the SAU. And that is it for that. The next meeting is November 27th at 545. All right. Thank you. All right. We'll move forward with our presentation. The SAU 56 uh, fiscal year 2025 budget presentation. Okay, good evening everybody. So for, for the ones who don't know, um, our SAU 56 used to be comprised of Rollinsford and Summersworth School Districts. A few years ago, Rollinsford and Summersworth split. However, Rollinsford now um, contracts back and receives our SAU services. So in the past, the SAU budget was its own standalone budget. Um, now it's incorporated into your Summersworth budget, but in order to give Rollins for the amount that they owe for services, we need to create it separately so that there's an assessment, um, you'll see later on in the presentation, a calculation of what Rollins for would owe for their portion of the services. So that's why we create this budget ahead of time because Rollinsford is a town and is an SB2 form of government, so their budget process is much sooner. So we're preparing their budget now, so they need to have these um, figures now. So the budget process, um, the B Budget and Revenue Committee has been meeting to go over the SAU budget and prepare it for tonight's presentation. So we've met a couple of times to go over it and finalize it. Tonight will be your first presentation and first reading of the budget. Um, on Thursday, I have a Rollinsford budget um, workshop, so I'll be providing them with this estimate um, of what the for, right, this draft is for tonight, and then at your December 12th meeting, you will vote on the final SAU budget, so then I can give them their final, um, what their services will be for next year, so that they can finalize their budget. So just some budget highlights. In terms of revenue, the only revenue that the SAU receives is for our indirect costs. So each of our federal grants, we're allowed to charge a percentage of each grant as revenue for um, writing the grants and submitting the reporting that I do for the grant. So a part of that comes back to the district as revenue. So we've estimated $28,000, which is $5,400 less than the current fiscal year. We've had an influx of grants over the last couple of years, and those are starting to go away. So we've revised the indirect cost to reflect that. Um, as far as the expenditures go, the total proposed budget is $1,558,451, which is a 13.97% increase or $191,071. This is higher than typical years, but you'll see why as I get into the budget. So the, a net budget of 196471 increase. So some general expenditure items. <laughs> This budget includes um, a 5% salary increase for the certified staff, which is really only two staff members in the budget um, because we have an, an interim superintendent at this point. We, we left that um, salary flat. Um, I left my salary flat for next year, so it includes uh, a, an increase for the special ed coordinators and the federal grants director. We did propose some rate adjustments for our non-certified staff, so these are the hourly staff. Um, their salaries were lower than, than area um, districts, as well as uh, even our secretarial staff within the buildings. Our SAU staff could go to the buildings and make more money than they're making currently at our office. So we did some rate adjustments. I put it in your packet of where we saw we adjusted everybody. So it wasn't a flat percentage increase for everyone the same. It was just making them uh, doing a rate adjustment for each person. We also are proposing removing our uh, uh, 
moving our receptionist position from part-time to full-time. So currently, Tasha only works 210 days, so she doesn't work all summer long. So we don't have any reception staff during the summer. Everybody has to pick up and, and cover that position. And we've been finding summers are very busy, especially for HR, with new staff coming in and fingerprinting and badging. So we really need somebody there over those summer months. So we're, we're going to request putting her to full-time. We also added a full-time data manager position. This is currently a part-time contracted service. Um, this position does all of our power school, all of our data, and all of that. And so we're going to move away from having a part-time contracted service and make it a full-time employee. We also added a, a student services director. So if you remember in the current budget, we used to have a student services, one student services director. We had a hard time filling that position. So currently, we have two people filling a special ed coordinator roles. Um, and we're just seeing that the need is there, especially with all of the, you know, as I talked about earlier, the additional students, we really need to have a director overseeing that. So we, were, we would like to keep both coordinators and have them at each, um, they separate by school and then have one director at the SAU office. And as I mentioned earlier, our health insurance is a 4.1% increase and our dental is 4.7. And this year, um, no rate increase for retirement. Those rates are good for two years, so we'll see that in the following year. So for function 2320, salaries and benefits, you can see the budget difference there is 203,218. Again, it's for all of those things I just mentioned, the 5% salary, the rate adjustments, the health and um, dental rate increases, and the staff changes. We did, I forgot to mention before, we did leave in the budget uh, position for an assistant superintendent. So it used to be called the Director of School District Operations. We've revised it to be a full super, uh, assistant superintendent. So that is, it's not an increase because the money was there for the other position, but we have added that back. It, it stayed in the budget. For general administration, there's a budget difference of 1,302, and this is due to our dues increases. So we are all a member, the certified staff are members of the New Hampshire um, Administrators Association, and we pay a percentage of our each of our salaries to join this membership, and we pay dues. So the increase is due to the increase for the um, salaries. Other support services is a decrease of $4,000. Um, as I mentioned earlier, the SAU budget used to be its own standalone, so it used to have its own bank account. Now it's all incorporated into the city's um, accounts, so we no longer have the service charges that we had for the separate bank account, so I removed those out of the budget. For operations, there is a decrease of 26908 This is due to moving the uh, data manager from a contracted service to salaries. So is a decrease because she's no longer a contracted service. I moved it out of that line and I added it into salaries. And then I increased postage based on utilization. We're mailing a lot more um, free and reduced uh, information, a lot more negative balances and things like that. For insurance, um, small decrease of $267. This was based on our rate from Primex for workers' compensation insurance. For custodial services, again, a decrease here of 4927 There is a 3% salary increase um, based on the custodial union agreement. So we have one of our Summersworth custodians clean the um, SAU office, so it's part of their agreement. Um, but we did decrease the hours from seven and a half hours a week to five. That's what they're currently doing. So I just made it to what we've been doing um, over this last year. For utilities, I left it flat. We didn't need an increase there. For maintenance, um, the increase is the 22,326. This is for the replacement of that other unit that services the special education wing. Again, it's 30 years old. It's past its use useful life. It needs to be replaced, but it's just not as immediate as the other unit that we need to do right now. We feel we can wait until July, until this new budget goes into effect. Property and liability, again, another small increase, $327. This is our Primex um, rate for our property and liability insurance. And contingency, there's always a $2,000 budgeted in this line just for any unanticipated expenditures that we may have. Uh, so the summary, um, again, as I mentioned, $191,071. The bulk of it is, as I said, the salary and benefit increases. The addition of the special ed director position was the main driver of, of the increase as well as the furnace replacement. And then our estimated revenue, I already went over this, it's our indirect cost, um, $28,000. 
So this shows the assessment for services. So this is how the fees are calculated on what portion Rollinsford pays and what portion the Summers or School District pays. So it's based on our RSA. Um, this is how all SAUs, when their uh, joint SAU is done, and when you did the contract with Rollinsford, you decided to keep the formula the same. And so it's calculated the same as if we were a joint SAU. So you take 50% of the equalized valuation for each community, 50% of the uh, ADMA, which is the average daily membership and attendance, and you combine that and it comes up with an assessment. So um, of the increase for this year, Rollinsford would pay the $34,000 for 13, that would be their increase for next year, and Summersworth would be the 162, that's the increase that um, you would pay in your SAU budget. Um, that's how it's broken out. So it typically falls, Rollinsford roughly pays around 16% and Summersworth picks up the other 84. That's typically how it's split every year. Doesn't usually fluctuate very much. And that's the end of my presentation. Again, as I mentioned, this is just your first read. You have the next meeting as well to mull it over and, and ask any questions and then you won't vote on it until December. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go ahead. What is, so we have this exorbitant amount Microphone of, on, Mandy. it's on. Yeah, okay, cool. We have an exorbitant amount of new special ed costs. What, do we run their special ed, Rollinsford's, and does their percentage change with their need, or are we not managing their special ed? We do manage their special ed, but any cost associated with their students gets built into their budget. Okay, so we're your not. Your budget is just for your summers where students, what thing. they pay a percentage of is the salaries for, for the, the, staff the staff to manage. Okay. So they don't pay, it, you, you, they have their so own standalone budget. none of the budget. increased are no, no, no. for No, they have their own standalone budget for all of their expenses. Excellent. The only thing that gets built into the SAU is staff and things that pertain to the SAU office itself. Yep. That's what they pay a percentage I of. I just wanted to make sure yep. we clarify. Nope. Great. Any other quick questions? I have a question. Yes. Question. Yep. Board Member Brown. On function 2622 utilities, so I am aware, I, maybe this, um, I'm in particular the electric um, mm -hmm. component. I'm aware from my work that utility costs, uh, electric utility costs are going up, and so I know that you've got this as a static mm -hmm. line item. Is it, and maybe this is you know part of buildings and grounds, it, has there been any energy efficiency to offset any spike? W or do we have a long-term contract for electric? No, again, or? this is just for the SAU office itself. Okay. So not any of the school buildings. So you may see an increase when we do the Summersworth side of the budget for each of the buildings. This is just the SAU office. Okay. All right. So I guess it's fair yes. being such a small building yes. to be static. Yes. At, okay. Sorry for my Yeah. No, it is a little confusing, <laughs> especially the timing where we have to do it ahead of time. So, yeah. yeah. I, I think I'm going to go off of that a little bit and have a plug if there's an option to go um, paperless for families or for mailing. I feel... Um, when I get my reminders for negative balances, I feel like I owe more. So if there may be an option for things like that in the future, being like, can you please email like the notice, just because, you know. As long as people have their power school up to date, we can do that. It's yeah. for the families that don't. And also, I'm required to mail out every year at the beginning of the year. I have to put packets together and mail them for free and reduced lunch. There's no option. They cannot be electronic. They have to be mailed to every district to make sure that they're reaching every family. Because some people don't have internet and they don't have these things. So I have to, it's required. But for, so there oh, are yeah. things that I have to do um, okay. mailings for. But for like my negative $3. If they sign up. I can say Yes, if they sign up for mealtime and account, they will get notified by email. But okay. they have to do the, they have to set it up, okay. unfortunately. By mealtime? Yeah. Yeah. Great. Yeah. All right. Any other clarifying questions? This will be, this is first read. Believe me, it would save us time to not to have to mail everything. No, thanks. Yeah, no, it looks like such an increase. Superintendent, yeah. did you have something? No, I don't no. have anything. Okay. She answered the question. Great. Wonderful. All right. Moving on. Again, thanks. if there's any questions before you vote on it in December, just feel free to reach out or next meeting if you have any questions you can ask. And is the budget committee recommending? Did I hear you? Yes. Say that? I just wanted to. I, I know you guys look at it way more in depth. This is the third version that they've that they've seen and at. they support it. And it is posted on our website under budget on our website. <laughs> I did post it there for anybody that needs to look at it. Yes. Thank you. 
great. All right, moving on to um, agenda item six, policy adoption. There are no policies for first reading, agenda item 6.2. Our policies for second reading are policy uh, JLCF, student wellness, and JRA, student records and access uh, to student records, uh, uh, FERPA. Uh, do I have a motion to read these by title only? I make a motion to read by title only. Second. Second. All, right, all in favor, say aye. Aye. All right. All right, board member Tierney. Okay, policy JLCF, student wellness policy. All right, do I have a motion to adopt this as presented? It was not a major change, just pretty minor. I motion to adopt as presented. Okay, do I have a second? second. Okay, any discussion about this policy? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. All right, updated policy JLCF student wellness is adopted. All right, one more. Okay, policy JRA student records and access to student records FERPA. Okay, do I have a mo motion on this policy? Motion to accept this <laughs> motion. To accept JRA as presented? <laughs> to accept JRA as presented. Second. Okay. Any, any discussion yeah. on this policy? All right. All in favor, please say aye. aye. All right. JRA is adopted. New business. Uh, agenda item 7.1, the intended $30,000 donation from National Gypsum for the CTC STEM program programming. What a wonderful opportunity. Who would like to make the motion? I motion to accept. Uh, the intended 30000 donation from National Gyposium. <laughs> Gypsum. Gypsum for CTC STEM programming. Wonderful. It's Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Do we have any uh, discussion on this other than our gratitude and thankfulness to this company for reaching out and such a generous donation? I was just going to say thank you uh, to our superintendent for lining up a, hopefully, a ceremony. Yeah. To uh, commemorate this uh, gift. Yes. Would that be potentially at our next meeting? Yes. All right, wonderful. All right, then I'll move on with it. All in favor of approving this, say aye. Aye. All opposed? All right, the donation is accepted. Thank you. Um, 7.2, our central office furnace replacement. It was in your packet. It was explained. Do I have a motion to accept this? move forward with the purchase motion to accept um, the central office furnace replacement right, second I, any discussion other than the clear qu clarification that this is happening immediately and will be replaced immediately right, right. Okay. all in favor say aye Aye. aye. all right all Thank opposed you. all right of course central office furnace. Thank you everyone as well that was that was scary to get the notice notices that um, that so hopefully that will be remedied completely. Uh, there's no old or unfinished business. There's future meeting dates. November 27th is uh, policy. Uh, I believe there's only one policy on the agenda um, at 5:45 at the SAU. November 28th is our next school board meeting. Um, December 5th budget and revenue. December 11th policy, December 12th educational programs uh, at 5.45 here at City Hall. Yep, and our meeting at 7. Uh, any comments by visitors of this evening? Do not think there are any in the hall? All right, then we'll move to comments by board members. Just raise your hand and I'll call on you for your final comments for this evening. Can I just? Oh, yeah, Board Member Brown followed by Clark. It's, it's more more of a, a question because Don had mentioned the the parade, and I assume some of the school groups will be in the parade. Yeah. And can you tell me what day that is again? Yeah, the parade is Saturday, December second. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, Clark and followed by Tanner. I just want to take a second and um, congratulate everyone that got uh, re-elected and got elected um, this coming term. That goes for city council as well as school board. I also want to say um, thank you for all the people that stood up um, and um, ran for offices because that's not an easy thing to do. It's, um, you know, you're putting yourself out there and it's very uncomfortable sometimes. Um, I also want to say thank you to the members that came out and voted for everyone. That was very nice. 
Last but not least, I want to say congratulations to the football team for their three peats. It's very nicely done. That's it. Uh, so I'm blanking all of a sudden. Oh yes. So I I'm always I really love election day in this in this city. I mean it's just fun, it, you know. And I tell you, I ran unopposed and I still stood at my polling spot for ten hours because I just really like to see the people come out and I find it uh, to be a nice opportunity to chat with other people who are running. Uh, you know, people who I may not normally get to see or, or get to know, frankly. Um, and I just, we, I, I feel like the, you know, as far as I am concerned, the people who step up to run um, for elected office in this town are just good, you know, really good hearted people and pleasant, you know, pleasant to get to know. Um, and so I, yeah, congratulations to all those. And even, you know, to, to those who, who, who didn't, you know, didn't make it, you know, there's always another time and there's just, it's, you know, there's always opportunities to help in the community. Um, I just, I also wanted to put a plug in for the parade since it came up. It's actually the, it's it's sort of a joint parade that we do, Summersworth does with North Berwick, or with Berwick, right? And it's a really, it's just a really neat uh, thing. We actually, last year it was a terrible, the weather was terrible and, and the, so we didn't have as much of a turnout, but in the past, it's just been really amazing, and so many groups, and um, our our local Catholic community here. We we um, are we get a lot like a lot of our parishioners out, and it's just really nice to go around and wave to people and say Merry Christmas, because as many of you know, it's people don't always feel comfortable saying Merry Christmas anymore. So gosh darn it, Merry Christmas. Um, but it's just it's a really nice it's it's a it's a nice event and and I know that people who get to watch it just from the sidelines really appreciate it so that's all I believe that the school board can't has an opportunity to walk in the school board it, no I mean in the in the parade if needed if you do want to walk our marching band will be our joint marching band will do or if you want to play an instrument um, reach out to me <laughs> you want to do that board member marsh does the recorder count? Yes. <laughs> yeah. um, first, congratulations um, to the volleyball team and the football team for successful seasons. Uh, that very impressive. Um, also, uh, super, super news um, uh, newsletter. Um, I think it covers a lot of, a lot of the bases, and it, it is something that many of us have been looking for and the community's been looking for as well as a whole um, so I appreciate all the effort that was put into this um, so thank you for that um, also you know, just to add to the election you know, I, I think that you know, as we know the vast majority of residents or you know even people in our country do not do not put their names on a ballot the vast majority um, so, you know, I really appreciate those, win or lose, who put themselves out there, um, are willing to, to put themselves in the, the arena, as has been said, you know, by Theodore Roosevelt, TR, and, um, you know, and for me, the arena isn't just about doing battle, although it can feel that way sometimes. Um, but it's also about being in the public eye, right? It's also about being judged and, and um, you know, by your actions and your votes and so forth. Um, so win or lose, you know, thank you and congratulations for, um, for putting yourself out there. Um, and uh, yeah, I normally stand, as people, as people in my ward know, I normally stand out for about 10 hours and I have to say that I appreciated I had to work that day. As I said to a few people, my mortgage has to come first. Um, but because of some staffing issues, I had to work. Um, but I, um, until a little bit in, later in the evening when I, when I stood out there. Um, but I, I appreciated some of the, um, the reach outs of people asking me where I was. <laughs> <laughs> um, as I said, I was pa passed out somewhere. And <laughs> um, so, but I do also really enjoy election day. and. I think especially local has a certain vibe to it. 
All right. So um, that's it. Thank you. Hello there. Wow. Sorry, I apologize. Um, so I, um, myself and Chair Larson had an opportunity to go to Idlehurst to um, be a part of their Veterans Day. And it was uh, their assembly. It was amazing. I don't think that my child was, was ever that tiny. Um, and it was just such a beautiful job um, to be a part of. And the week before that, um, Chair Larson as well and myself were um, at Maplewood and we got to see a um, Choose Love performance. Um, and it was amazing. So I really am the, the involvement between the schools and um, the school board is just such a, an amazing gift and it feels really lovely to be so welcomed into the schools. Um, I'm just feeling very grateful, so thank you. Yeah, just to piggyback, we, it was such an honor to go to one of the best kind of events in, in our in, in our in our district and to welcome veterans and their families coming in it's uh overwhelming at times because um to see uh children family uh rush towards their vets when they come in and look for them and then to recognize um just such great service men and women and a world war ii veteran that's 99 and a half Wilford, yep, that's a that is it's has come to each one and that I hold very I, I just as, a, as amazed and Idlehurst just did such a great um they did a great job just the presentation welcoming everyone the students saying I think we put posted some f videos online and then 2 days later uh you know our our um football team won the championship in a really wonderful great game great sportsmanship great um ability and uh you know to see kids that i've known since early ch you know being being at idlehurst or being at maplewood win in their senior year was really wonderful and then going to the volleyball uh seeing there you know i'm just kind of ready for next year to start already um with all of our teams, uh, the, uh, the I think that will represent. I think there'll be other students represented in the um, parade on December second. But I know that our marching band will be there. Um, and with that, we do not have a non-public tonight, uh, but we do have some scheduling to do about other meetings. So looking for a motion to adjourn. To adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Meeting adjourned. Easy. <laughs>